Hey, what's good, peeps? Uh, it's another week, another day that the Lord has made. As the Bible says, uh, we rejoice in it. It's a beautiful day. Um, not a beautiful day because the sun is shining, but because the S-O-N is shining. So it's a beautiful day to uh, beautiful day to rejoice. And it's simply because God made the day. Um, hadn't come to you guys last week. Been engaging and dialoguing with our our student ministry uh, through FaceTime and been doing some Zoom calls, things of that nature. I believe this past Sunday we were able to uh, speak to about 16 to 17 of them um, through the Zoom call. Um, missed a good portion of them, but nevertheless, it's a it's a it's a start. Um, but just being able to engage with them to uh, see how they're processing this this situation with not being able to go to school and being able to be social and um, being in the the normal classroom setting, if you will. So uh, just to kind of break the monotony of that, um, haven't really been giving them any kind of homework assignments besides uh, being engaged with their families, uh, loving their families, spending time in the word of God. Uh, seeing what the Lord has to say uh, to them. Uh, thankful to know that most of them, a lot of them have uh, been engaged in our virtual worship services on Sundays and on Wednesdays with their parents. Uh, a lot of them have been saying their parents have uh, been making them get up just as they would be coming to our church campus and getting dressed and uh, eating breakfast and coming together in the living room or family room and uh, when it's time for praise and worship, they're standing up and they're clapping. And when it's time to read the word of God, they're they're standing up in obedience to the word of God. And they are engaged in the preaching of the word of God. And when it's time to give, they're giving their offering. So um, that's 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 proud to know. So, parents, I I do uh, salute you um, for continue continually engaging them. Um, thank God for those young people who do work and have jobs and uh, who are giving uh, their offering, some of them even over the 10 percent. We're talking about 16 and 17 year old um, students. So we thank God for that. We are blessed and I'm blessed uh, just to be in relationship with them and for you parents allowing me to continue to do life with them and be in their lives. Um, speaking to some of them a little bit more directly, some of them ask questions about relationships and um, we'll continue to kind of share in the next several weeks uh, about those relationships. But more or less, I want to discuss today um, just about how God sees them, not about how a boy sees them or about a, how a girl sees them, about um, how they should change their their um their their the way that they look or their presentation um but god sees all of us he sees them as masterpieces um they're not mistakes none of us are mistakes we are god's masterpiece pieces every child um is a masterpiece god took great joy in creating them in forming them in their mother's womb even right now my my my, my wife is pregnant and uh, we are expecting a baby uh, in October, and right now God is forming that baby uh, in my wife's womb. Whether they, whether whether the child, whether you, even as an adult who are watching this, whether you're a product of a one night stand or a teenage pregnancy uh, or an abortion that may have went wrong or a planned pregnancy, even in those situations, uh, I want you to understand this one truth, and that is that. You are, again, not a mistake. You're not an accident. You are God's masterpiece. In fact, when we look at the reality of scripture, it comforts us to let us know that God didn't just trip over a rock uh, and cause us to be born. It wasn't just because of the Big Bang Theory, if you will. But everything that God does, he does it so well. He does it so thought out. He's so meticulous. He's so detailed. He's perfect in every situation and every single detail that he does. He does it. He does it well. Everything that he decides, everything that he decrees, everything that he declares is well thought out and perfect. Everything that he does is always right. 
So just the fact that you were born, just the fact that you are breathing right now, just the fact that you may be on here watching this video proves to us that God loves you, that he sees you, and that he knows that you are his masterpiece. In fact, the Bible tells us that while we were still being developed, as I already said, in our mother's womb, God was already working and, and forming and shaping us. So the way that you look right now, God wants you to look that way. The birthmark that I that I have on my head, God wanted me to have that birthmark. The big nose that I have, God wanted me to have that big nose. The big lips that I have, God wanted me to have those big lips. The shoulders that I have, that's how God wanted me to be created. So if you have a big head, God wanted you to have a big head. If you have a short torso, God wanted you to have a short torso. If you are only 13 years old and you're six foot three and everybody is looking up at you, God wanted you to be that tall because he said that he created you, that he formed you, that he shaped you. See, that's the thing about a masterpiece. A masterpiece is not something that you can just go into a room and come back out five minutes later and say, bam, here it is. It's a classic timeless piece of work no 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 artists have spent years authors have their magnum opus magnum opus which is their 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 one 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 piece of work that basically defines their career they've spent years and even decades working on their one piece and you are that piece that god is daily working on you're you're valuable you're so valuable that the God who created all of creation is working on you every moment of every day. The fact that he is keeping you alive is evidence that he is supplying you with air in your lungs so that you can turn to him, to know him, to love him with everything you have so that you can meet this glorious God who sees you as his masterpiece. See, it's natural to kind of look at yourself in the mirror and say, man, I wish I can change this. When I was your age, when I was a teenager, I always wanted to be tall. I wanted to be six foot six, 250 pounds, full muscle, coming down the court, dunking on people. I wanted to be tall. I used to come home every single day and the birthmark that I have on my head, I used to put cocoa butter on it, trying to make it go away. But God said, no, not so. I'm not going to change that. Even though I wanted to change it, I wish I can go to the gym and, you know, be a little bit more fit. Have a little bit more muscle. And maybe some of you are like that. Maybe you want to lose weight. Maybe you want to gain weight. Maybe you want to gain a little bit muscle. And I understand that we all have those insecurities. But here's what I go back to. I don't go back to putting all of the weight of my decision making on how I feel or my emotions. I go back to God's word. And God's word tells us in Psalms 139 that I, like you, we were fearfully and wonderfully made and God doesn't make accidents he's he's taking time to work on us on for every moment of every single day and physically that's one aspect but spiritually it's the reality that I want you to focus on because God has created us and given us a soul that will live after we die and our body goes into the grave and where your soul goes all depends on your belief in Jesus Christ if you, hate, if you embrace him as God's true Messiah, sent to save those who couldn't save themselves from the slavery of sin, then your soul will go with God when your body goes into the grave. But it doesn't. But if it doesn't, it will go to a place of torment. That's what's heartbreaking to God, that even those who reject him, even those who, when they die, are still rejecting his plan of salvation. That doesn't make God happy. In fact, the Bible tells us in Ezekiel that God weeps when those who are wicked die. Why? Because he shares with every human being snapshots of his character. He made us in his image. We're valuable. We're above every other form of creation. That's how special you are. So it doesn't matter what other thinks of you. It doesn't matter their opinion of you. It doesn't matter how they see you. It doesn't even matter really how you see yourself. It only matters how God sees you. And God says that you are valuable. God says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are God's masterpiece.